Hello and welcome to my new SQL Server Quickie. Over the last three SQL Server Quickies I have covered the various transaction isolation level that SQL Server offers you. Today I want to continue this discussion by talking about the isolation level serializable. That's the last of the four pessimistic isolation levels that SQL Server offers you. This isolation level is used to prevent so-called phantom records. Let's switch now over to the flip chart where I want to describe this isolation level in more detail to you. Let's talk now about the transaction isolation level serializable. As I've already mentioned previously, serializable means that SQL Server prevents so-called phantom records. Imagine we have here a table with some, with some customers and in that specific column we are describing in which country a specific customer is placed. Imagine now we want to read our customers from France, meaning in that case we have here two records and in the isolation level serializable SQL Server must make sure that that range of records remains stable so that no other phantom records can appear. Therefore it's very important that we are not able to insert a new record with the value of France. We are also not allowed to delete a record from this specific range. And in addition, it's also not allowed to take another record and move it into that range with an update statement. That's the idea about phantom record avoidance. We want to make that range of record stable. This is provided by the isolation level serializable. SQL Server uses in the isolation level serializable internally a so-called key range locking technique. Key range locking means that SQL Server places specialized locks on every of those records and makes that range of records stable. As the name already implies, you need a supporting non-clustered index on that specific column. Without a non-clustered non index, SQL Server has no key on which SQL Server can place the lock. And in that case, SQL Server just locks every record with a shared lock. And if you have more than 5,000 shared locks on individual records, then SQL Server triggers a lock escalation and places a shared table lock on the table itself, means you deal with a table which is currently read only. Therefore, it's very, very important in the isolation level serializable that you have a supporting non-clustered index on your search predicate where you want to have or where you want to prevent phantom records. Let's switch now over to SQL Server Management Studio where I want to demonstrate you that specific behavior. In this demonstration, I want to show you the specifics about the transaction isolation level serializable in SQL Server. In the first session, the session that reads some data, I set in the first step the transaction isolation level to serializable. By setting the isolation level to serializable, we tell SQL Server that we want to have a read stability and a phantom record avoidance. When we read a set of records, that set of records is not allowed to change. In the next step, I begin a new transaction and I read records from the table person.address where the column state province ID is between 10 and 12. This means now that SQL Server has employed a key range locking technique on that search predicate and has locked every individual row. Therefore, this range of records remains stable and nobody else can change it. 
when we look at the execution plan you can also see that we have a supporting non-clustered index on the column state province id that the query optimizer has chosen during the compilation of the execution plan let's switch now over to the second session where i also start a new transaction but in this transaction, I try to insert a record into the table person address with a state province ID value of 11, directly into the range that is currently locked by the other session. When we now execute that insert statement, you can see that it blocks the reader, the select statement, blocks the writer, the insert statement. When we look with a third session into the hash table of the lock manager, you can also see that the insert statements wait on the so-called range insert null lock. The insert statement just checks if the specific range is currently available. In our case, it is currently locked and therefore we are waiting on this specific lock. When you now try to insert a record outside of this range, like a state province ID value of 8, the insert statement will just succeed. That's the power of the key range locking technique employed by SQL Server. In this SQL Server quickie, I have introduced the transaction isolation level serializable to you. Serializable is the most restrictive one and provides you a read stability in combination with a phantom record avoidance. The most important thing to remember about this transaction isolation level is that you need a supporting index on your search predicate. Without a supporting index, SQL Server can't use a key range locking technique to prevent phantom records. In that case, SQL Server places shared locks on every row and ultimately this will trigger a lock escalation which locks your complete table with a shared table lock. I hope that you have enjoyed this SQL Server quickie and next month I will talk again about transaction isolation levels but next time we will talk about optimistic concurrency that was introduced back with SQL Server 2005. Enjoy your time and stay tuned until next month.